Shredder's back and he's kidnapped April. Wait, is that too predictable? Okay, how about, uh, he's kidnapped Splinter. Wait, has he done that before too? Uh, hold on. Come on. Stick with me here. Burn, Vernon, and Irma. What? Ah, let's just say he kidnapped everybody. Fan games are not at all uncommon, but when one is good, it kinda sticks out from the pack. This time around, let's take a look at one that I think is quite ambitious. What I said in the opening wasn't just me joking around, but that is actually what the old Shredhead did. Every single one of Ninja Turtles' friends have been captured by the foot. We're talking everybody from Ace Duck to Zack the Fifth Turtle. Whether they were in a game before or not, whether they had an action figure or not, Shredder's got them, and you've got to save them. Rescue Palooza was a labor of love by Nurso X, who previously made fan games of Thundercats and Power Rangers. It uses the Beats of Rage engine and borrows a variety of sprites and elements from the classic Konami Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, so the game is instantly familiar looking as soon as you start playing. The basic gameplay is inspired by that of the classic arcade style Ninja Turtle games, Jump, Attack, and Special, not too surprising as so many other beat-em-ups follow that format. Here you get both the original arcade special, referred to as the Secret Attack, and those from the Manhattan Project, the latter of which has a recharge meter, which means it cannot be spammed by the player. I never really use the specials all that often in those games, so that does not bother me one bit. You navigate the different levels via a hub world that is inspired by the overhead sections of the original NES game, and then you tackle the various side-scrolling levels. Most are the traditional belt-scrolling fare of the arcade-style games, but a few are decidedly a bit more platform-based, not unlike that original NES game. As you complete the different levels, you rescue and unlock more playable characters, both the friends and fellow heroes that you rescue, and thanks to Donatello's cloning machine, many of the villains will also join your side. You wind up at the end with 60 playable characters. That's right, 60. Pretty insane if you ask me. While I do think that some of them are a little bit more fleshed out than the others, it is still really impressive that the creator of this game managed to adapt that many characters, let alone have them playable. What? Most beat-em-up games have five or six standard enemy types, and then level, maybe mid-bosses, and then four or five characters if you're lucky. So this game having way more than that is fairly impressive, especially with this being a fan game. Visually, the games look kind of to me like somewhere slapped between the 8-bit games and the 16-bit games. That's just the way the graphics worked out. The game isn't dropping sprites from one game into one environment and the other. That said, it all looks pretty darn good, and the characters, they do look like they all belong in the game. Once in a while, I feel like some sprites might be drawn a little better than others, but still, pretty good look. The music and sound all feel pretty familiar as well, with tracks and audio effects inspired by the other games, but not exactly. I don't know if it's my setup, but the sound did seem a little muffled to me. I had to turn up the volume pretty high to really hear much of anything, but what I heard wasn't bad, I would just really like to hear a bit more of it. While I do think there is a lot of good going on, I do have some nitpicks about the game. For starters, I think some of the character movement should be a little quicker. It's definitely not my setup, especially when you compare the characters with some of the ones you rescue versus like the original turtles that you start with. They just seem to move way too slow, in my opinion. And that's probably the worst of it. Yeah, I can also say that the initial Controller mapping can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but otherwise, it's still not bad, especially since you think this is a fan game largely put together by just one guy. To sum it all up, if you are a fan of the Ninja Turtles, and you have a PC, and you haven't checked this out, I definitely think you should. Being a fan game, it's completely free, so it won't hurt one bit for you to check it out, and hopefully this will be around for you to check out for a good long while, and it should be provided that companies like Nickelodeon, Viacom, possibly even Konami, or whoever has Ninja Turtle uh, video game rights right now, don't step in and ask for it to be uh, taken down. So far, Merso seems like he's been pretty lucky with that, with his uh, Thundercats and Power Rangers games have been around for quite some time. Definitely, if you can, check this out. Speaking of fan games, and 
ones that have been taken down, whether it's still around or it's not. What are your favorite fan games out there? Is it still available from its original source, or do you have to get a little creative to find it nowadays? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.